And ultimately the question is 2024, ding, 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 who's gonna win the fight? numbers in this racket. Is this the year to go heavier into real estate or heavier into the stock market? Like, which one's bear, which one's bull, which one's up, which one's down? All coming next. Man, let's talk about my friend real estate, right? I mean, tried and true, but look at what happened during the pandemic. 2020 and 2021 was a year of explosive growth. And it has a lot of people worried, like, Chris, is the market going to keep coming up or doesn't it have to come down? Like affordability is definitely being hampered on. So we're gonna talk about what's gonna happen likely in real estate 2024. And then we got the stock market. And if you take a look at January, January is always really bad for the market, but people wanna know, is this finally a year when we're gonna make up some previous losses? Like really, where do I wanna go heavy? You know, these two paths really have unique appeal. Stocks offer the excitement of ownership with quick gains and elevated risk. Real estate provides stability ability through tangible assets and hands-on value enhancement. Q4 2022, we had a national median sitting somewhere around $379,000. And they projected in 2023 that the market was gonna go up like one and a half percent. That's what Zillow was saying. But in actuality, it ended at $431,000. The national median literally went up over $50,000, which means anyone that owned a lot of real estate and saw an average increase of the equivalent $50,000 was probably pretty happy. Like, let's just say you know someone that owned a lot of real estate, just holding real estate, that was a beautiful thing. But that was then, and after really big gains, a lot of people get worried about, okay, is there gonna be a correction in the market? The real estate industry average prediction of 1.5% home price appreciation in 2024 definitely suggests that they're forecasting stability. And Goldman Sachs has a pretty conservative forecast as well. In fact, if you take a look at the graph right here, they're showing in 2024, a 0.6% increase in home prices, which by the way, I think is like incredulous. How could that happen with interest rates dropping? I think those prices are gonna be on the move. They're calling in 2025, a 3.8% increase, a 4.9% increase in 2026, and in 2027, a 4.9% percent increase. So they're calling for some steady growth, but it seems to match some the historical nature of what we've seen. If you drew a line of regression between 2001 and where we're at by 2027, that crater of a dip you see right in the middle, well, that was 2008 and its recovery, but we've more or less gotten right back on track. So there's a lot of people, the experts are saying, hey, real estate's not going to move a whole lot. It's going to be pretty safe. And yet we got the Fed that's predicting six rate drops in 2024 and every rate drop should create a spike in real estate. So do I actually agree with these forecasts? I don't, call me crazy, but they're gonna be wrong and they're not gonna be wrong by a little. I think they're gonna be wrong by a lot. Pace Morby, a really good friend of mine, maybe my only competitor and truly in the space of scaling single family homes, we both agree by the end of 2024 that the national median is gonna peak over a half million dollars. So if we're sitting at 431 right now, over half, that's a $69,000 increase. And I think if you give it 18 to 24 months, it's gonna be a $100,000 increase. And Finch, who's a conservative name in the game, is saying, hey, 88% of the real estate market is still overpriced. And they're even saying that if the Fed lowers rates, the prices are gonna keep on hiking. Okay, so let's talk about the playing field of the stock market. Man, here's the crazy part. I've got 50 grand right here. Cash, these are, these are Benjamins, okay? If I wanted to buy $50,000 of stocks, like for example, let's say I'm looking into Tesla. Have you watched in the last 12 months how far their robotics have come along? I mean, they're starting to move light years ahead. And I really think that Elon Musk literally wants to put a robot in every household. They were quoting prices of a personal robot being like, it was like 14 or $15,000. And I'm like, okay, that is so affordable that if everyone gets a robot that's capable of doing all their menial tasks, that can drive for them, do things for them, that's gonna be crazy. Well, we're about to have a car company that could be the first trillion dollar car company because of what's happening in the robotics. I'm not saying that I'm investing in, in, in Tesla, but let's just say for a moment that you're like, I wanna buy Tesla as an example. $50,000 can buy you $50,000 worth of stock. And if that stock goes up the way I've seen it projected, it's like, ooh, I'd like to own a little bit of that because that could be a crazy multiple return on my money over the next decade. But how much real estate can I buy with $50,000? 
you can buy $250,000 worth of real estate. In other words, you get a 5X leverage component. And so it's kind of an interesting game. A lot of people are like, well, if real estate's up 3% and the stock market's up 3%, then they're dead equal. And it's like, no, I don't think you understand the way the game is played. When I buy real estate with a 20% down payment or a 3%, I get a leverage point that it's five times or greater than the stock market. So if real estate went up by three, multiply it by five, it's now 15 to three in favor of real estate versus the stock market. This is kind of important though, because you have 61% of US adults that own stocks in the stock market. I think that some of these apps that have bypassed brokerages that allow people to just buy stocks online, I do it myself, has made it so much more accessible. And then you've got fractional investing where it's like, oh no, it's $260 for that share, buy $10 of it. Like you don't need an even $261 for every share that you actually buy. That's changed the nature of the game. So people are invested really heavily in the stock market right now. Now we wanna do a comparison and say, what should you be doing for 2024? Check it out. So you've got real estate, which is that steady umbrella in the financial storm. While stocks may be drowning, real estate stands firm. Well, it's a little early to tell, but the experts are either saying real estate's gonna hold steady or real estate is actually going to go up. Or you've got people like Chris Crone that are saying, I think real estate's gonna go up a lot. And then you compare it to the stock market. It's like, okay, well, January is often an indicator of what's gonna happen for the year. And we have not had a great start to January. Is that indicative that it's not gonna do super well? Well, right now, jury's a little bit out. At the end of the day, for me, it's like, I'm gonna put my money hard on real estate, definitely not the stock market. One, because of the leverage principle that I explained, but also what I believe is actually gonna to happen to real estate, because we're missing six million homes in this country. Rates are coming down, and in the markets I'm investing in, you've got billions of dollars being deployed in those markets, and you got people moving there like crazy. They don't have enough homes. I mean, we're gonna to continue to see a surge in price. Real estate, for me, it's the winner. That's where I'm gonna be going in 2024. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna do anything in the stock market. Like what I said about Tesla, I'm actually investigating that. I'm always every year looking into robotics, AI, I'm looking at you know what's on the move. And I would not say that I put a commensurate amount of money in the stock market like I do real estate, but I do have something there because I do have some of my wins that do come from playing the stock market. Just not 401ks, IRAs, or mutual funds. Those companies already experienced their growth. Those are called blue chip companies. They already made it, they already did this. Now Tesla has done this but robotics might cause it to do it again. So I'm definitely gonna be finding companies like that where there's a high asymmetric upside. Worst thing that can happen is I lose my money. But if the best thing that happens is I can 10X or 50X my money, I'm going to have, I'd say, a small part of my portfolio allocated into the stock market. Now, if you're sitting here and you're wondering, okay, Chris, like, What's my game plan? Well, a couple of things that you can do. Number one, see my nifty cell phone number right here on my shirt? Here's my invitation, just text me. Text me, ask me a question and ask for a game plan or click the link below this video, drop me your name and number and I'll reach out to you with a member of my team and I'll give you a custom game plan. Now, if I do this for you, you can't get upset because you realize I'm just one man's perspective and I'm probably going to step on all sorts of sacred cows. As long as you're okay having an outsider's perspective, I think there's insane value when you get a chance to learn from a multimillionaire. And by the way, this game plan is free because I believe that knowledge is power and I wanna give you that knowledge. Okay, Chris Crone, I hear what you're saying about real estate versus the stock market, but come on, man. What about my 401k? Don't you know? I get free money, I got the match, I got the tax benefits. There's all sorts of reasons why I should be putting money in a 401k, right? If you wanna know how real estate honestly compares to 401k and you wanna know the down to the penny real life situation number, click right here, let me show you.